right, you guys, here we go. So in class, we noticed my video didn't turn out so great. And um, some of you might not have been able to hear me uh, when we were going over how to use Desmo. So here's a new video. This is problem number two on page 51 of your book. So I would say that if you end up taking these notes, you can turn them in for full credit on assignment on that assignment. Or if you want to, you could take these notes for a little bit of extra credit just to make sure that you know how to use Desmos. Okay. So I'm in Desmos right now and I'm looking um, to type in the function exactly as you see it. <coughs> Pardon me. And so I'm going to put in a negative one divided by five. And then I have the absolute value and I'm using this uh, keyboard down here to get my absolute value symbol. And then I'm going to hide it again because I don't like looking at it. And then in here I have X plus six. And so that's my graph. Oops, my bad. Plus four. Plus four. Oh, that's interesting. I noticed how that moved up. It moved up. Look at that. My vertex is at something four. What is that? Negative six, four. So that's how you use Desmos at the beginning. Just basically you type it in. And it's very important that you make sure that you type it in correctly. Because if you're having troubles with typing it in, then you won't be able to get um, you won't be able to get the correct data out of the table. So then here is the um, what is that called? The gear symbol. And when you click on it, you then see the table symbol. And so now I have a table. And luckily this time, nope. See, look at that. The table does not include my vertex. And that's something you should learn to expect. And some of you might have even noticed that the table, it basically is centered around zero all the time. And so if your vertex isn't near zero, then you won't be seeing the vertex in the table. So if you want to put the vertex in the table, you would put it in, and I'm going to put it in the middle here at negative six. So negative six, four. And then you know that my requirement in, when you're graphing is to make sure that you have a couple of points to the left and a couple of the points to the right. Um, I did mention that I really do love to see the y-intercept. The y-intercept is at two, and, I mean, sorry, 2.8, but, um, and it, that is in the table, by the way. I could see, oh, no, my bad, that point disappeared. I took it out of the table. So if you wanted to leave it in there, boom, there you go. Uh, and so what about the other points then? Well, you can use points that have been given to you, such as the y-intercept and, and why not. Um, but other points, you might want to pick them yourself. And here's what I'm going to mention. In this problem, you will notice that the graph that they gave you, wow, are they skipping a lot of numbers. So they're doing everything at a multiple of four. And so you might want to know exactly what's happening there because that would make it easy for you to do some graphing. Okay. So why don't I put them? So I like zero. I, I like graphing the Y intercept and I like, I need the vertex. And remember, I want something on the other side of the vertex. So if my vertex is at negative six, why don't I just check to see what's happening, say at negative eight, you know, because that's on my graph as a point. Uh, there's a nice line right there. And then why don't I check to see what's happening maybe at negative 12? And so there I have what? Uh, definitely two points to the left and I'll highlight them right now. Oops, my bad. So that is to the left and that is to the left. And then here's where my vertex is, which Desmos told me what it was. And then I have that point right there, which is my y-intercept. And this one, this is negative two. Maybe I'll change that to be, um, maybe I'll change that to be negative four again, because I have that number on my graph. Okay, so now I have a table and I'm just gonna uh, work exclusively now on your paper. Okay, so Desmos got all the information that we needed from it you guys would be looking at your Chromebook and you would be looking at your paper and you'd be trying to get, you know, information off of your Chromebook and onto the paper so that I know that you've learned how to use Desmos and that you've learned how to graph an absolute value. And hopefully you've learned a little bit about um, 
a maximums or minimums and that V shape um, either being up or down. Okay, so here's where I would record my table. And again, my perfectionists, you might want to record everything in numerical order. So I could say start at zero and put down the 2.8 and then go to negative four and say that that was 3.6 and then hit um, negative six because that was my vertex. Remember, that's important. That's your vertex. And so you might actually want to write that down, vertex. And then here, let me move that up a little bit. And then here I have negative eight, which is also at a height of 3.6. And then I have the y-intercept, which is 2.8. So I'm only doing two mirrored points on my graph, but that's okay. All right, so let's take a look then at negative six, four. And so on my graph, let me just label where negative four is because halfway between negative four and negative eight has got to be negative six, right? And so negative six up to four, boom, that's my vertex. And then I have negative eight is at 3.6, which is just under four, right? And I know we're doing a little bit, a bit of guessing here and that's okay. And I'm gonna do my mirrored point, it's over there. And then for zero, I'm at 2.8, which like, shouldn't that be two right there? So 2.8 would be just above that. And again, we know we're, gra we're, we're guessing a little bit and it's, it's not the end of the world, okay? And then here I have my last point that I wanted to do. Oh, I already put 0 to 0.8. What's another point that I haven't graphed? Oh, I see it. It's negative 12. Negative 12 is also at 2.8. Oh, I did find the mirror point. Okay, so 3.6, I maybe graphed it a little bit high. You know what I mean? Because when I try to draw a straight line from here to here, you know, it's like, oh, well, I don't know. It's not quite perfect. And that's why you must include the table because the graphs that they gave you are very hard to do by hand, okay? And so this is another reason why you might want to do it on a regular sheet of paper. Okay, so if you wanted to make your own graph then, how would you maybe do it, okay? Now I notice that there's a lot of negative X values on here. So I'm going to concentrate just on the negative part of the X axis, right? Negative one here, negative two here, negative three, so on and so forth, all the way out to negative 12. Okay. And so I'm just counting every line and I'm labeling it with the next integer. And that seems good enough to me because it's a very long piece of a line, right? Um, the next thing I'll do, though, is I'll mention that the heights are not very tall. So the highest point that I have is a four. And I also want to graph some fractions, you know, that are close to like, like this. This is close to 3.5. So there's a trick you can do if you want to graph it being like, ready? If you wanted to graph halfway points, what you could do is you could call this one, two, three, and four and then here in between three and four would be a 3.5 and that would make it easier for you to graph that 3.6 it'd be just above so let me show you what that looks like so we know my vertex is at negative six and four and then we know that the vertex has two points right next to it at negative four we're at that 3.6 which is just above 3.5 and then at negative eight, we are also just above 3.5. And then for negative 12, then we are all the way over at 2.8. So this, this would be 2.5. So 2.8 has got to be in between somewhere, right? Because this, this would literally be what? 2.75. So here I'm going to say negative 12. I'm just above that three quarters of the way mark. And then here at zero, oh, well, shoot, I, I, that's right on, okay? So now if I try to draw a straight line, I feel like it looks a lot better. It's still not perfect because, again, we're not computers, you know? So I know you guys prefer Desmos. And, I mean, well, you do now. Now that you've been practicing in Desmos, you're definitely going to prefer it. But just in case you wanted to practice a little bit more graphing by hand, and why would you? 
well, you might want to become an architect when you grow up, okay? So I am going to be teaching you some really cool architecture things, especially in the second semester. But I just wanted to make sure that you, you saw how to do your own graph on your own graph paper if you weren't going to use the paper that they give you. Okay, so now that you've seen this graph um, twice, <laughs> let's actually talk about the question really quick. It says, given that function, right, that absolute value function, find the vertex and two other points and use them to help your graph. Okay, so we did that, but I wanted to add like a part B here, okay? What is the domain and the range, okay? And this is for those of you that were missing stuff. What I wanted to mention is you can take the absolute value of any number, you know? So what I want you to know is that the domain is all real numbers. Now notice how I did that double line right there on that R. That symbol actually does mean real numbers okay that's a symbol that's used in math and so if you didn't want to write anything else you could just write that double lined r and then totally get full credit okay what about the range though i'll mention that i know that there's a maximum right the line comes to a top and that high value is going to be a four so I'm going to say then that y and 4 should have a relationship. And ready? That relationship is that y is less than or equal to 4 because that's the high. Okay? And how do you know that you're going to get a maximum or a minimum? Right there, you can see. If you have a negative out in front of the absolute value any time, it's going to make this, this mountain shape. So this is a mountain shape. And if there's no absolute value, that's when you're going to get that V shape. All right. One other thing that I'll mention, and this might have been obvious to some of you, you might have seen it. Hey, look, there's a four there. Guess what? If there's a number being added or subtracted at the end, that number is what the range is. So if you look at this negative and then you look at this four, then you don't even have to graph it. You can just say, you know that it has been shifted, ready? It's been shifted up four and then it goes down from there. And when I say it, you, you know, like, what do you mean it? I mean the vertex. So this is my vertex and that's the maximum. And what we saw in class was we were talking about the, just the basic one, the absolute value of X. The absolute value of X, it starts down here and it goes up like that. And so this y equals the absolute value of x, that's called for the book, it's called the parent function. And so what we're going to move on and talk about is, well, how can you move that parent function into this function, right? And the way that you do all that moving is you put numbers, okay? You put numbers here, and you put numbers here, and you put numbers here, and that is going to tell you how the graph is moving. So that's a little preview of what we're about to do.